Hello, and welcome to the First Presbyterian Church in Germantown's regular Sunday service of worship. I am the pastor, Reverend Rebecca Seegers, and it is my joy and privilege to welcome you to worshiping with us this day. A couple of quick announcements on this day. Anna Ryman has entered into hospice care. I know that Anna is beloved by many of you, and she will be having her birthday this week, which would be 101. So God bless Anna and her family, her extended family, as they struggle with these transitional steps in her life. Please hold her and her family in prayer. Additionally, I am going on vacation this week. The Reverend Kevin Porter will be preaching next week. God bless you, Kevin, and thank you for your support of the congregation in my absence. And finally, I would just like to lift up to you that we are about to enter our season of stewardship. So we are so grateful for all of you who in this challenging time have continued to give. Thank you. Please be mindful as we look at the many, many ways our worship, our community, our Bible studies, our fellowship continue in this time. If you are able to support the mission and ministry of the First Presbyterian Church in Germantown, we are grateful. Thank you. Come, let us worship Friends, let us call one another to worship. Oh, give thanks to God who calls us here. Oh, listen for God's wisdom that speaks to us now. Oh, worship our God who is holy and just. We will worship God with honor and praise. Testament lesson, uh, which is taken from Psalm 96, says that we are called to, uh, to sing to the Lord a new song and to tell of his salvation from day to day. God's saving power is something we need to be reminded of every day because every day in our humanness, we forget and put other things in the God spot. It is because of this that we have the opportunity weekly to look back and to confess the sins that we have committed or our sins of omission and to receive anew God's promise of salvation. Let us confess our sins using the prayer of confession in our bulletin. Gracious God, we come before you to confess our sins. When we have acted out of fear, when we have acted out of anger, when we have acted out of selfishness, we have sinned. When our thoughts have been small-minded, when our thoughts have been unruly, when our thoughts have been bitter, we have sinned. When our words have been unfeeling, when our words have been thoughtless, when our words have been admirable but empty, we have sinned. 
when we have wasted your gifts and possibilities, when we have not lived out of love, we have sinned. But you are the source of love and life, and we ask your forgiveness and your reforming of our very selves for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Friends, hear God's good news for you and for me this week, taken from the Heidelberg Catechism. Your sins are forgiven. I believe that God, because of Christ's atonement, will never hold against me or any of my sins or my sinful nature, which I need to struggle against all my life. Rather, in his grace, God grants me the righteousness of Christ to free me forever from judgment. Friends, believe the good news of this gospel, which is as, is as true for you as it is for me. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. And friends, it is because of the forgiveness working itself out and through our lives that we are continually brought into a relationship of deeper peace, not just with the God who made us, but also with the neighbors God has blessed us to be on this journey of life with. And so, whether it is easy, whether it is difficult, whether you would want to do it, or whether it is a challenge, I would invite you to extend the peace of Christ with all you encounter, beginning even here and now. The peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Let us pray. All wise and loving Heavenly Father, Prepare our hearts to hear and understand your holy word today. Silence in us any voice but your own, that when we hear the word, we may also be compelled to obey it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The first lesson this morning is the 96th Psalm. Listen now to God's word. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glories among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established and shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad. Let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. 
Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite the young people to join me at this time. Hey, everybody. How are you doing this week? I hope it's been a good week for you. It's been pretty good for me. Um, I was wondering if any of you have ever watched Sesame Street. I used to watch it when I was a kid, believe it or not. Yeah, Sesame Street has been around for a long time. And one of the things that I really liked was how every episode would be brought to you by a letter. And I was thinking, as I was looking at Psalm 96 this week, that if you were going to pick a letter that Psalm 96 was brought to you by, it would be the letter W. Yeah, that's right. Do you know why I think this psalm would be brought to you by the letter, letter W? Well, let's see if you can figure it out. So the psalm begins with, oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. And then it goes on to say, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day, declare his glory to all the nations. And I think that's what we do when we come together like we are right now. You know what we're doing right now? Can you think of a word that starts with the letter W that's about praising God? That's right. It's worship. So the whole way this psalm begins, all about praising God, all about worshiping God. And there's all kinds of ways we do that, right? We worship by singing, we worship by praying, we worship by being together. There's all kinds of ways that we can worship the Lord, starting with the letter W, right? And then as you go on with the psalm, it starts saying things like, ascribe glory to the Lord. Do you know what the word ascribe means? It kind of means like give to. And then it also says, say among the nations, the Lord is king. So we are supposed to do what? We're supposed to, to tell people about God. Do you know a W word that's Telling people about God? The word witness. Witness. When you're a witness, like if you were going to be somewhere for a trial, right? Someone was on trial and you were a witness at what happened. That means you would be telling what happened. So if you witness about God, you're telling people how God has been active in your life, the good things that God has done for you, the reasons why you know that God's presence in your life is important. So first, we worship. Then, we witness. And at the end of this passage that we've read today, it says that we should be looking forward because the Lord is coming in judgment. The Lord is going to come and is going to, to look at what we've done and how we've worshipped and how we've witnessed and is, is going to look at how we've done with this world that God has given us and is, is going to come and, and judge our job, right? 
We don't know when that's going to happen. And it might not even happen while we're alive. So what should we be doing so that when God comes, we're able to go, yes, Lord, I worship. Yes, Lord, I witness. What are we supposed to be doing in the meanwhile? Watching. Watching and another W word could be waiting. But waiting in an active way, not just like sitting around twiddling our thumb. That's why I picked the word watch. Because when you're watching, you're expecting something to happen, right? You're excited about it. You want, you want to see what's going to come. So you're really trying to be active in your waiting. So this is what this psalm tells us to do. Worship, witness, and watch and wait. Psalm 96, brought to you by the letter W. Amen. chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Listen for God's word to you. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, teacher, 
we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. God, we thank you for your word. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the words we heard read today from your holy book. And now as we listen to these words which come from my lips, I most humbly pray that you would pour through me the gift of preaching, that they remain no longer simply my words, but instead are transformed into your living word to each and every person who hears them, that they might be met in exactly their place of need. We pray this in great anticipation, Lord, and in the strong name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. I am so sick of polarization. I don't know about you, but it seems like everywhere we look, no one can agree with anyone else Everyone is at odds and it is just frustrating. It feels like it's never been this bad. But in reality, if we look back to where we came from, to the beginnings of this country in our US history, we will see that polarization is how we got here. As a matter of fact, there were a group of people who were known as as patriots or colonists, those who lived here on the land and who thought of it as their own, who were very, very frustrated with the government that oversaw them. That is the British government. Whereas there was a whole nother group that was very much in favor of remaining a part of that government. And they were known as royalists or loyalists. And they were loyal to the crown. And so you had these patriots versus these loyalists. And what were they upset about? They were upset about taxation. You see, the crown was taxing the colonists to where it was very, very hard for the colonists to be able to make a living, to be able to, to, to just get by. And yet they had no representation in the British government. And they found this to be very problematic. So, so they had a slogan, no taxation without representation. And they had protests, protests that, that got really, really huge. As a matter of fact, on December 16th, 1773, a group of men climbed up onto a boat in Griffin's Wharf in Boston Harbor and threw over 342 chests of tea into the water as a protest over the fact that they had to pay taxes on that team and they weren't represented in the decision. Eventually, of course, this slogan and these protests went into full-on revolution. War came out of that polarization. And it was all over the same thing that our scripture is over today. Once again, we're looking at extreme polarization and it's over taxes. Once again, we're looking at two groups that don't get along 
one of whom is loyal to the land and one of whom is loyal to the crown. And it's all over taxes. It's all over who has authority and control. So our scripture opens with the Pharisees and the Herodians. Now, the Pharisees, as we've talked about many times before, are people who love the law, who spend their whole lives learning scripture, steeping themselves in scripture, doing midrash. Midrash was, was like treatises on how you best follow the scripture. They were invested in how to follow the law, the Jewish law, the Deuteronomic law. Meanwhile, we have these Herodians. Now, there are no extra biblical sources in which Herodians are mentioned. So the only two places in history that this group are mentioned are in the New Testament. And the assumption is that they were followers of Herod Antipas. Now, Herod Antipas was the Tetrarch of Galilee and Perea. Galilee, of course, is is all of this area to the west of the Jordan River that includes Israel. And Perea literally means the other country in Greek. And it's talking about the land on the other side of the Jordan. So, so Herod Antipas was the ruler on behalf of Rome of this large swath of land. And he was responsible for receiving taxes and then building. He did amazing building campaigns in this part of the Roman Empire. The Pharisees and the Herodians agree on absolutely nothing. The Herodians are for taxation because they believe in what Herod is bringing to the country. And the Pharisees are completely against it because they want to be independent. They don't want to be a colony of Rome. The only thing they agree upon is they don't like Jesus. They definitely want to get rid of him. So the scripture literally tells us they are plotting to entrap him. And they come to Jesus and they say, we know you're a great guy. We know you're sincere. We know you're honest. We, we know that, that you really are following the Lord, that you've got all of that going on, and that you don't show partiality to anyone, just to God. Now, in reality, these words here are blepes es prosopon. And blepes es prosopon, the words that mean you don't show partiality, literally mean you don't look in anybody's face. You don't, you don't see their face as the design of, of their value. You're invested in God, not in what's going on with a person. So then they cast their net. After they've schmoozed him, they say, so what do you think? Should we pay taxes? to the emperor or not. Now they know that they've got him because if he says yes, then the people that the Pharisees represent, that is the oppressed Israelites, they're gonna be mad. They're not gonna wanna follow him anymore. And if he says no, well, not only are the Herodians going to be mad, but they could likely even bring him up on charges of sedition, of treason. So they've got him, right? He can't say yes, he can't say no. And what does he do? He calls them out on it. He says, how dare you? How dare you try to trap me to trick me, you hypocrites? Who do you think you are? And then he answers the question, render to the emperor what is the emperor's, and to God what is God's. So what does this mean? What belongs to Caesar and what belongs to God? Well, he starts by saying, you know, show me 
the coin. And, and here's where we get this little play on words, right? You don't look into the face of anyone. And what's on the coin? A face. And whose face? Caesar's. So there he says, render to Caesar what is Caesar's, render to the emperor's what is the emperor's, and render to God what is God's. And Tertullian, who was a late second century, early third century Christian theologian, says basically he's talking about the image. Once again, this face piece, right? What is the face on the coin, on the denarius? The face of Caesar. So give the coins to Caesar. Meanwhile, what is the image in which we are made? God. So what do we render to God? All that we have. All that we are. For we are made in God's face. In God's image. A father and his young son. We're traveling to visit the father's sister, the boy's aunt. They're traveling along the highway. It's a bit of a drive. And eventually the little boy gets hungry. And he says, Daddy, please, can we stop? Can we stop and get something to eat? Well, the father loves his son. He sees up ahead the golden arches. He says, sure. And he pulls off into the rest stop they go in sits the little boy down and brings him a bag of fries. That salty, fatty smell wafts up in the air and the boy is delighted. He begins to eat the fries with great abandon and joy and the father is enjoying watching him because that's what parents do, right? When they see their child enjoying him or herself, it makes the parent happy. And eventually he reaches over to grab a fry from his son's pack. And just instinctively, without even thinking, the little boy, four or five years old, reaches out and slaps his dad's hand. Those belong to me. They're mine. The father's a little shocked, but he sits back. The boy finishes. And they get in the car to ride the rest of the way. As they're driving, the father is reflecting upon what has just happened, and, and he thinks to himself, does my son not know that those fries weren't his? That he only received them because I bought them, and I gave them to him. And indeed, if I had wanted, I could have gone and gotten more and brought him more. If I had thought, that would be best. I am the one who gives them everything that he has at this stage in his young life. Belongs to and comes from me. There's a sermon in there somewhere. You see, we are made in God's image, but we are the recipient of God's grace. Everything we have, everything we are, is as a result of God's blessings upon us. And I think that is hard to remember in these polarized times. There is a tendency for us now, as we, as we tense up our shoulders and we grind our teeth, as we walk around with headaches and stress galore, as we're worried, worried about everything. Worried about our church, worried about our family, worried about our country, worried about our world. It is hard to remember that it all belongs to God. That God has got this. And that is exactly what Psalm 96 tells us. In the time for the children, I, I talked about those W words, worship, witness, watch, and wait. All of the things that, that Psalm 96 calls us into in this new day, this new day, this new time, this new era that is unlike anything we've ever seen. And ordinarily, when we think it's a new thing, that sounds fun. This is not fun. 
but it's also not ours to bear alone. It is a new day, but we have a new way of living into it. We have God and Jesus Christ telling us, sure, give to the country what belongs to the countries, but give to God what is God. And what is that? Ourselves, our love, our lives, everything. If we can remember by whose grace we live and share that, making our lives a worship and a witness, then as we watch and wait for the one who comes again, we will be filled with the blessings of a new day. May it be so. Amen. using the familiar words of the Apostles' Creed, let us, through our speaking them and our commitment to living them, make them bear fruit this week as we affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we approach the throne of grace with uh, both those things that are known to us all that require our prayerful attention and those things known only to us individually that God knows full well and God has promised by his abiding love to make whole and to make all things well. Let us lean into that promise as we lift up to God our prayers. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, the God who in your amazing grace and your profound wisdom gave us the gift of life for such a time and place as this, who formed us in families and congregations and communities blessed us both with gifts and callings that only each of us could fulfill and walked us through any number of challenges and struggles and griefs that we have borne successfully by leaning on you. Lord, we come together again this week uh, mere weeks before and in some ways in the midst of an election that is challenging our sense of what it means to be neighbor and to recognize each other as citizen, seeking your wisdom 
as we seek to be faithful in using uh, the sacred gift of our votes to help discern leadership that would lean this nation more fully into the direction you would have us go. Lord, as neighbors and congregants seeking to live out the law of love to truly give to Caesar what is Caesar and to give to you what it means to be people of the way who by our actions as well as our words proclaim the law of love. Lord, bless us, mold us, shape us, chasten us where we need to be chastened, inspire and empower us where we need that as well so that as we move into these days and weeks ahead, we would take all that has gone before as prologue to what you would have us do and be moving forward. Enable us to receive the grace and forgiveness required to let the past be the past and to embrace a future that is more sharply into the vision of what it means to be the church of Jesus Christ for such a time and place as this. Enable us as ambassadors of peace to make our streets and our homes and our souls more peaceful. Enable us as those who proclaim to be followers of the, the father of abundance to share from a sense of knowing that all that we need has been and will be provided. And enable us to extend the same amazing grace to all we encounter that was shown to us. In so doing, may we participate in not just the healing of our lives and our households, but our church, our community, and the world. In the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our worship continues. For it is not just about the time that we spend uh, connected by the Spirit uh, around monitors. It's also about the choices that we make, including how we choose to spend the first fruit of our labor. And so our worship continues as I invite you to respond from a spirit of generosity in support of the ministry and mission of the First Presbyterian Church in Germantown, either by using the link before you, fpcgermantown.org slash giving, or by sending tithes and offerings to the First Presbyterian Church in Germantown, 35 West Shelton Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19144. <laughs>
as you enter into the week ahead. May you recognize that there is a new way to live into this new day, worshiping, witnessing, watching, and waiting for God's presence and love. And may the God we know as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of us all be with you and flowing through you, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.